welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be talking about my content strategy so as business owners everyone is always saying content is key right and so today i'm going to share with you the behind the scenes of what my content marketing strategy looks like for 2023 for my business so first things first before i even get into this the way that i structure my strategy is with something that i like to call the content to sales strategy this is a strategy that i teach inside of two of my programs one of them is a content to sales like a little mini course and the other one is my full group coaching program where I go into depth on how to actually create a content to sales strategy but I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what it looks like so what I do is we focus on what is your searchable long-form platform then we add in your distribution platform this usually looks like social media channels and then lastly we add on email so for most business owners I usually recommend that you have three different marketing platforms that you are focused on at any given time to grow get your business you know some awareness market sell all those things I usually say focus on three different platforms and I know this is kind of contrary to a lot of opinions and a lot of advice where people say focus on one platform double down on this one area get really good at this my thing is you won't know what you're actually good at until you try different things and so this is why I usually tell people to tackle three different platforms at the same time but we do it with a lot of intention and so when you're inside those different programs you'll be able to see like exactly like the nuances but long story short I am team repurposing all day I don't want you spending hours and hours hours try and create content for every single platform and this is why the content to sales strategy is such a rich and robust strategy for you to learn how to do and implement for your specific business so today I'm gonna kind of walk you through what my content strategy looks like for this year now before we get started and before I tell you mine I just want you to know that I am team omni-channel marketing and basically omni-channel marketing means a organization's presence across multiple channels the key to this is that we want to make sure that people are having a consistent experience with us across all the platforms that we're on and so the reason why you'll see in a second why i'm on so many platforms and the way that i'm able to do that is because i'm keeping the content relatively consistent across all the platforms so i like to think of it in terms of i use social media to distribute my message i'm not using social media as a place to create overly original content where i don't share anywhere else right so social media is not my base my pillar content so let me tie it all together for you so my primary platform and a long form content platform I actually have two this year. It's my podcast and YouTube. The thing is, is that the way that I'm approaching both of these platforms is actually different. So technically each week I have two pieces of long form original content that's going out. So on the podcast, I focus a lot on marketing, sales, mindset, business strategy, like the actual strategy, tactics, and productivity. Versus on my YouTube channel, I'm showing more of the behind the scenes. I'm giving you a sneak peek into my life, both as a mom and a business owner. On the YouTube channel there's a lot of productivity general business advice a lot of motherhood and showing that the behind the scenes of my life as a mom and then of course my faith so the major difference between these two pillar platforms is that the podcast is my number one top of funnel lead generator right I am trying to build awareness with my podcast I am building a bit of community but on podcast people can't talk back so with the podcast my main goal is to actually build that awareness for my brand and to get people actually to hear about my message and so because what I do and my offers are surrounding marketing, sales, business, you know, productivity, things like that, I'm I'm sticking to with my podcast, keeping it very, very specific to what my offers actually are. Because on my podcast, that is also where I sell. So I educate people, I serve people, and then I sell to them. Versus on YouTube, YouTube, I'm showing people more the behind the scenes. And I'm really leveraging YouTube as a way to be a creator. I love creating. As you see, I love creating content. I create a ton of content. And so YouTube just allows me that flexibility to be able to really share that behind the scenes part of my life that a lot of people don't get to see when I'm just talking to you know my mic on a podcast. I also really love YouTube because it just opens up the door to a lot more opportunities when it comes to being able to repurpose content. So previously when I just had the podcast I wasn't able to really repurpose it because it was audio only. Now of course you can still repurpose audio not saying that you can't do that but I find it a lot easier when I have like YouTube videos where I can take clips and then repurpose it into other areas and so that's another reason why I really wanted to implement YouTube as a primary platform for this year. So this year I have two primary platforms. It's going to be the YouTube channel and the podcast. Both of these platforms, the goal is for people to become more aware of my brand and to understand what it is that I do, the things that I enjoy talking about, 
and etc. YouTube goes a little bit of a step further because I'm able to actually build community on the platform and I really enjoy being able to build community. Like if I could do nothing else, I would just be a community builder. So those were my primary platforms, my long form platforms. Now let's talk about my distribution or my social media platform. So I have four distribution social media platforms that I'm on. I have a Instagram, well I have two Instagram pages actually. I have a TikTok, I have Pinterest, and a Facebook group. Now I'm using all of these things in a different way but the key thing that I want you to understand is that the reason why I'm on so many platforms is because I'm literally using them as distribution. I am using these platforms to share and reshare, repurpose the message and the content that I'm putting on my podcast and on the YouTube channel. Now obviously there's going to be some original content right sometimes I'm going to create reels that are very specific for Instagram or I'll create Pinterest pins that are just really specific to you know what Pinterest is looking for but for the most part I'm really using all of these channels as a way to distribute my core and main messages that I'm putting out on my podcast and on YouTube. So when it comes to Instagram I have two Instagram pages and these Instagram pages directly reflect my podcast and my YouTube channel. So there's two different pages that do kind of two different things. They, they overlap a lot but they do two separate things. So first I have my Mrs. K Hillman Instagram page. This is my personal brand page. This is my I call it my main page. And on this page, I really do a lot of repurposing the content that I'm putting from YouTube because Mrs. K Hillman is more so the behind the scenes. It's me as a person. So on the Mrs. K Hillman page, I do a lot of behind the scenes, sharing a lot of motherhood, business productivity, and I also link it or I collaborate with the Becoming CEO page just to get that page a little bit more reach and visibility. The main thing for that page is that I want to create engagement. I really want to create community. I'm not focused on growth necessarily this year, but instead I'm focused on engaging my community and then connecting converting my existing audience. So I'm doing something very similar on the Becoming CEO Instagram page. The only difference is that the content on the Becoming CEO page is not behind the scenes. I'm not sharing my personal life or any behind the scenes knowledge or information over there. It really is focused on like how I do my podcast, really focusing on the business education, talking marketing, talking sales. There's also a lot of inspiration and productivity that happens on the Becoming CEO page as well. But really, I am focusing that page not on me being necessarily the face of the brand and more so just articulating the fact that hey I know what I'm talking about you know this is how I can support you this is how I can serve you here are strategies and tips and tactics and things that you may need to know that's what I'm doing over there versus on Mrs. K Hillman where I am really showing up as hey this is the face behind the brand this is the CEO behind the brand that kind of thing with both of these accounts I really am focused this year on engagement community and really just like converting my existing audience I used to be this person that I would really focus on like oh I need to grow I need more people I need more followers but I've come to realize in the last few years that it's not about getting more followers but it's about converting the followers that you do get because everybody that follows you they're following you for a specific reason and once I started realizing that I was able to shift my thinking from oh man I have to grow or I'm not growing to hmm am I really engaging my community and I realized in the last couple of years especially because obviously I've had two kids I've just gotten you know in the weeds of life I realized that I wasn't engaging my community as much as I thought I was really using them just to distribute whatever I was putting out there but not really using using as an opportunity to distribute, but also build and foster community. And so that's something that I'm really getting back to this year is focusing on community. And I feel like that's the overall theme behind my content strategy this year is to build community, build engagement, and then convert, right? I want to convert my existing audience because people have already bought into me, my message, my personality, the, the content I'm putting out, right? So I need to do a better job at actually building community, having conversations doing those kind of things with these people before i try to grow and pull in new people right these people are still interested they're still engaging in my content why because they know they like they trust me and so i want to be a good steward of that this year by really spending some more time engaging creating content that they want to see and then building those conversations up so that we can get to the point where i can actually serve them in a more paid capacity so the next platform i have is tiktok now tiktok is something that i have been going back and forth about what exactly am i doing on tiktok but this month in January, I decided to actually sit down and say, you know what, I'm just going to repurpose content from Instagram over here to TikTok. Now, everything doesn't work. I'm going to say that everything does not work being repurposed, but a lot of things do. And truthfully speaking, on TikTok this year, I'm using it as a platform. But the main thing I'm doing is just researching. I'm just learning the platform. I'm not going to try to do a long drawn out strategy over here. I just want to be able to have another place to distribute my content. And so one thing that I've noticed is that 
repurposing a lot of my content from Instagram actually has been really effective in connecting me with people that are like me, right? Or people that are my ideal client. And then they come over to Instagram and they connect with me there, or they come over to YouTube and connect with me here, right? So I'm not really using TikTok maybe in a official capacity, but I am using it as a place to repurpose my content because the truth of the matter is, is that you can never have too many eyes on your content, right? And so because of that, I'm gonna put it over there and see what it does. If it does well, great. If it doesn't, that's fine too. And right now I'm just, I'm collecting data. I'm figuring out what kind of content that I create is doing well on the platform. I'm not really looking at what trends are happening or anything because honestly, I don't even understand the ecosystem of TikTok. I'm not even trying to understand it right now. So I'm really just figuring out, okay, me being myself, me being the content creator, the CEO, the business owner that I am, what are people going to resonate with when it comes to me? And so I've been just really using TikTok as a way to learn a new platform that previously I've been kind of intimidated to get on because there is a lot happening over there. So I'm using it simply to repurpose it. You know, I can't say whether or not it's working right now, but I am seeing more, you know, engagement, more views. And I am seeing people come from TikTok and follow me on my other platforms where I am actively building community. So my next distribution platform is Pinterest and I feel like people have stopped talking a lot about Pinterest. I, I mean, I hear Pinterest a little bit like in whispers, but I don't feel like people are really giving Pinterest it's just do, okay? Because Pinterest is bay when it comes to driving traffic. And so Pinterest for me is another distribution channel and I call it a social platform, even though sometimes people think it's social, sometimes they don't, but I'm gonna call it a social platform. And on Pinterest, I'm simply using it to drive traffic. I want it to drive traffic to my blog. I want it to drive traffic to YouTube and I want it to drive traffic to the podcast. And so with YouTube, YouTube, I'm able to post videos to Pinterest and let that drive traffic back to my YouTube channel. With everything else, I just create simple Pinterest pins and I put them up and that drives traffic to the blog and um, my podcast. My last social platform is my Facebook group. Now I'm not gonna lie, I've been having a love-hate relationship with this Facebook group. I started this Facebook group when I first started my business back in like 2018 or 2019 and it was rock and steady for a long time until I had babies. <laughs> Once I became pregnant the Facebook group became an afterthought I just was having a hard time keeping up and I have a really engaged community well I used to have a really engaged community I have over a thousand members in there it's been amazing and because this year I really want to focus more on building community I'm actually trying to figure out how to re-engage the Facebook community now with that being said the content strategy behind using that platform is a little testy, right? We're testing that Facebook strategy, the Facebook group strategy, just like I'm testing out TikTok. With the Facebook group, I'm going to focus more so on repurposing what I can from other platforms, which is super, super hard because Facebook groups do not care for a reshared post. Um, so figuring out how I can pull conversations out from my pillar content or my primary content, like the YouTube channel, like the podcast, figuring out how I can bring those conversations into the Facebook group in a way that actually makes sense. And then also figuring out how I can just keep the community engaged and without me having to do it all the time. That is the biggest problem and obstacle I find with Facebook groups is that sometimes you end up doing so much work and it's like, uh, I don't really feel like it's the best use of my time. Like I'm just being 100% honest and this is for anybody. Like it's sometimes not the best use of your time to spend inside building a Facebook group when you're always having to create something new for this community of people. So I'm really trying to figure out how I want to navigate this this year. For the month of January, it did not go too well. I didn't post at all like I wanted to, but in February I am going to go back and try to create some community posts just to see if we can get some engagement, some conversations going on in there. Something else that I think that will work this year for Facebook groups and my Facebook group in particular is whenever I do like free um, workshops or different training and different things like that, really focusing on hosting those events inside the Facebook group. I feel like doing that will at least create some engagement during that period of the free challenge of the, you know, experience, whatever it is that we're doing. It'll create some engagement in there and then hopefully the moment and we'll you know continue to stay strong as long as I am popping in and out so we're still fine-tuning how the Facebook group strategy is gonna look I may drop it <laughs> just being honest I may actually end up dropping it but for right now you know I am excited about really trying to um, get back into the swing of the Facebook group because I will say that when it comes to building community Facebook groups hands down have been the best 
way and the best place to build community and it also helps you build things like your email list and all other kind of stuff when you use the features properly so we talked about the primary long-form platform we talked about the distribution channels so now there's email so email i consider this the conversion channel and so i am always going to be a huge advocate of email it doesn't matter what kind of business you have you should have email because this is the one place that you truly own and you're able to really engage with and connect with your community without fighting any body's algorithm the other thing is is that people that are on your email list they have opted into being sold to right people know that when they give their email up the person that's emailing them is going to sell to them so because of that these people are probably a little bit more qualified to actually be buyers so my emails are a reflection of every part of my brand it's a reflection of the youtube channel where i'm showing the behind the scenes right i give a lot of behind the scenes tea and stuff like that inside of my emails but also it's the strategy and it's the stuff that i talk about the podcast and really talking about marketing sales mindset productivity things like that so the last part of my content marketing strategy which i separate this from the other like my main strategy because i'm not sure if i'm going to do it or not but i do want to actually start back blogging when I used to blog, I used to get a lot of traffic to things like my podcast, my YouTube channel, because people would maybe Google something, find the blog, and the blog will redirect them to either my YouTube or my podcast. The reason why I'm back and forth about whether or not I'm going to do this is simply because of time, right? I don't have all the time in the world, and I'm already creating so much content in those other areas that I'm just not sure how and when I'm going to get around to the blog. So what I'm thinking with the blog actually is maybe every quarter or maybe after six months, I'll sit down and I'll pull all my old content. I'll make blog posts for it. I'll get all that stuff up and let it just automate by itself instead of trying to week by week focus on the blog. I feel like that will help me not spend too much time on, you know, trying to blog or trying to make time for it and really allow me to focus on my pillar, my main primary platforms, and then distributing them. So the next thing I want to share is how much content I'm actually creating. So for the podcast and YouTube, I'm creating one podcast episode or one video per week. Now, there are some weeks actually that there will be two YouTube videos. And when that happens, I'll be able to add another podcast episode because what I'm doing is for like, like these information based ish <laughs> episodes that I do here on the YouTube channel, I will also repurpose this onto my podcast. But for the most part, the main cadence for YouTube and the podcast will be one episode per week. For Instagram, the plan is to do a minimum of four posts per week. And a lot of times there will be like two reels and those reels will probably be something coming from the YouTube video, or maybe I will like create some kind of, you know, native piece of content using some B-roll inside of Instagram. But Overall, I'll be doing four posts per week for each page. So I have the Becoming CEO page that will get four posts and then my personal page will get its own four posts. Sometimes there will be some collaborations and some crossover just because it makes the most sense to do that. But at minimum, I'm gonna try to get out four pieces of content for both pages each week. For TikTok, because I'm using that as a as a testing ground and I'm just repurposing Instagram content, there will be anywhere from three posts to maybe, you know, five posts, like who knows how many posts will be up a week, but I'm gonna use that platform to repurpose. So like I said, some weeks it may be two, <laughs> other weeks it may be five. It just depends on what content I'm creating for Instagram to see if it actually fits over on TikTok. Pinterest, I put out daily pins. A pin goes out every single day. It's super simple. I spend an hour, maybe two hours a month, and I have all my Pinterest pins done. For email, at minimum, I send out one email per week. But most weeks, I try to send out three emails, and then when I'm in a launch, I'm sending out daily email. One thing I want to mention back with YouTube is that with YouTube, I'm sending out or I'm putting out one video per week, but I'm also using YouTube Shorts and I'm repurposing things from Instagram, TikTok, like any short form content. I'm also repurposing that into YouTube Shorts just to test out how it does one thing that I've noticed is that it really is hit or miss when it comes to YouTube shorts because sometimes I will post a short that came from one of my YouTube videos and it flops right maybe I get like 10 views but then I'll post another one another clip from the exact same video and that video will get like 600 or a thousand views so and and it'll get subscribers like so i'm like okay i don't really know like i i don't know what lands yet i'm still testing that out but i did want to mention that with youtube shorts and with youtube there are some additional options when it comes to the content that i'm posting and since i'm talking about other content i also want to mention instagram stories so i used to be instagram story queen okay but now i have two kids and to be honest instagram stories are just not a priority for me anymore although i do know 
know because my goal again with instagram specifically is to build engagement to build community i do know that stories are important for that because that's how my audience talks back to me so one thing that i try to do is whenever i post which will be four to five times a week I try to make sure that I put some stories up and a lot of times it's going to be about whatever I posted. So if I post a reel, I'll share the reel to my stories or before I share the reel to my stories, I'll like, you know, say good morning and I'll put like a little, you know, sticker up or something and then I'll share the reel that I posted for the day. And then after that, I may share like a little bit more context, a little bit more behind the scenes behind what the post was about. And that really helps me kind of create some kind of stories because right now your girl is just not in the headspace especially with having the kids and them being all over the place and sometimes i do want them in the recording and sometimes i don't and it just it's just a whole situation so instagram stories it's not like they get the less of me but instagram stories is just not a priority for me in this season i'm still trying to figure out what i want my stories to look like i do sometimes like schedule or like pre-make story slides so that i can have something to post but for the most part i just try to you know wing it and take it as it comes whenever i have like a stroke of inspiration that will be what i put in instagram stories so the purpose of my content strategy the thing is is that i am leading everything back to email this year i really want the focus of my selling to happen via email while yes i'm gonna sell you know on my podcast here on youtube in my you know instagram but like yeah i'm gonna sell in all those places but I'm not gonna sell as much as I have in the past. In the past, it would be like every single post I was selling. And sometimes I go through seasons where I do that. But this year, I really wanna focus the bulk of my sales inside my email because I wanna use my main facing platforms as a way to build community and engagement. That is the focus. So that's pretty much how my content strategy looks like for 2023. I'm super excited about just how I'm going to be able to keep up with this. I really am like a content and productivity queen. Like I love creating content. It is just, it's one of my favorite things to do when it comes to my business. And so because of that, I really want to spend more time this year creating content. And because I really do love the omni-channel marketing approach, because I love being in all the different platforms and this is not for everyone i want to say everybody is not going to be able to jump out the gate and be on all the platforms i do have systems in place that make it easier i you know i have a actual structure and strategy behind why i'm doing it so um, i'm not saying that everybody should do this but this is what my strategy looks like for this year and maybe you can pull some things from it that will help you figure out what your strategy is and if you have any questions or just are trying to figure out what your content strategy needs to look like you can always join my constant to sales program it's a mini course i think it takes like maybe two or three hours to map out your entire strategy there or you can join me in, inside becoming ceo and inside there i really break down how to create your content strategy and then i work with you along the way as you are executing that strategy so that's what's happening over there and, and that is it for this episode so until next time i will talk to you later darling okay